This week on XG247, we're at the video game BAFTAs to check out all the winners, moderate losers, and also speak to the BAFTA Fellowship winner, Peter Molyneux. We're going to have lots of coverage, all the interviews, and loads more. All coming up this week. You've just picked up your award for Brotherhood. How are you guys going to celebrate? Uh, we're going to start by drinking and then uh, try to remember the night. What do you think does it for Connect? Why do you think people love it? I think it just it just opens doors that people haven't walked through before, to be honest. I think they were real wow moments and we haven't even seen them all yet. We've just presented some of them that have gone down rather well. It's recognized for, the, for all that work that went into that product. So, yeah. it's, it's, great. it's the heaviest award we've received so far. And uh, it's uh, going to look awesome in our shelf at the office where the whole sound team is going to... You've got loads of them, right? Just like, what? You've got loads of bastards lying around in that office. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? Why, why is Cut the Rope so addictive? So addictive is because the guys have created such a, a beautifully crafted game that is dedicated to entertaining people. Um, it's just a joy to play. It's simple as that. Why do you think you won the award? Why? Yes. I don't know. This is something I cannot really answer. You know, there's so so good composer in this competition that you know I I won't never say you know that I'm the best. You know, I don't I don't know. I, maybe it's, maybe I, I get more luck. I don't know. You never know, you know, how, why you win, why you, you lost, you know, it's... For an undefeated boxer, are you undefeated when it comes to video games? Definitely not, 100%. I can say I'm not that great on games. Um, I've got two sons, one's 16 and one's 13. And every time I go home on the weekend to Wales, I get systematically beaten up at whether it be FIFA, Fight Night, or any other game I play on. So I don't mind, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm just, I I'm think I'm getting too old for video games, that's the thing. I'm old school, I like, you know, I was in the old Super Mario back in the day, you know, it's Nintendo 64, the Sega, Mega Drive, but all these new games I'm struggling at. I think, I think just looking back at the F1 franchise and where it had been and, you know, we got a lot of F1 fans on the team and we were really keen to, you know, give the fans what they wanted and, and I hope this is just the first taster of, of what fans can expect from us, really. FIFA 11 right now. That's that's my one. Can we get you all in? I feel like I feel like we. <laughs> you all you hear on an aeroplane is. Pedro! And then me and him go. Horukin! <laughs> so it's kind of like it's quite mixed on plane. I don't like anybody. Anybody sitting next to us probably has a really horrible flight. <laughs> you horrible people. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're really proud. We didn't expect to, to win so many awards, to be honest. We would have been happy with one. We won three. It's, it's a great uh, recognition for the hard work that the team did for the, the past three, three years. And uh, we're really glad to get it from BAFTA. And uh, we see it as a cultural recognition of the work done in the game industry for years now. John Goddard, you've just picked up. Can we see it? Can we get a bit higher? An another award for Mass Effect 2. What's going on? I guess people really love this game, um, and so do I. And I think, um, you know, that's the beauty about um, Mass Effect 2. Uh, it's, it's an incredible journey for, for players, um, not just because there's this incredible style and rich universe and amazing audio and story, but, uh, and characters, of course, but, you know, ev everyone who plays it can put their own stamp on this game. You know, they, they, they are Commander Shepard. No matter what they make, make him or her look like, they are Commander Shepard and they, they can choose to do incredibly diverse things within that, that world and they can play that game how they want. I've, I've, I'm a young guy, but every, most of the games I've played have mostly had your name on. No, that can't be true. That can't be true. It, and you know what? Only a month ago I was playing Dungeon People again. Really? Yes. Really. I, loved, I loved making Dungeon People, but there was a story on the video about taking, uh, me taking the team to to uh, my house and that's what we did and we were just loved baking it. It was really good fun. It's an end of an award ceremony. 
the BAFTAs, the BAFTAs 2011. BAFTAs. Whenever an award ceremony finishes, we speak to our friend here, Spencer Spong. Sven Justin from Spong. Hello, good to be here. Good to be here. It's good to have you. I'm going to start interviewing. What award did you pick up this evening? I picked up the award for being awesome and okay. for being the partingist, uh, vikingist person in uh, in the industry, I guess. Last year we had, a, you know, a couple of games winning a lot of awards. This year it was just spread across. We just had heavy rain and then I spoke to everyone who like wanted to win an award, practically did. Yeah, it was very generous of, yeah, yeah. Uh, of the so BAFTA nice. committee, really. Yeah. yeah, it was so nice. Bless them. They try their artists. And it was obviously good to see um, Peter Molyneux pick up Lifetime Achievement Award. Peter Molyneux is, well, from a personal perspective, he's one of the gaming's living legends, really. Yeah, totally. He's a total great. And he is essentially um, one of the biggest names in the UK industry. He is our... He's our king. Yeah, he totally is. And so, he is a king. <laughs> you know, it, it, it just makes sense that we try and honour him in, in as big a way as possible, especially considering how much he's done for the industry. You know, a lot of people kind of, on the internet, you know, the internet, they kind of say all these things about him, like, oh, yeah, he, he has big vision and, you know, he doesn't really follow it through and stuff. But, do you know what, that doesn't matter. It because doesn't some people are... Yay. Some people make... He didn't know, did he? <laughs> he knew it was going on. Right, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Some um, people make great games. No, some people make great games and they just kind of, when they do the PR tour and they talk about their games, they should be feeling enthusiastic about it. They should be kind of thinking, yeah, like David Cage, I put a lot of work into this. It's finally coming through. And Peter Molyneux is just one of those guys, one of the last guys who is so enthusiastic about everything he does. He's done this for so long and he just keeps coming up with great ideas and sometimes imagination is just one of the greatest assets that you can have in this industry, especially in a sea of Call of Duty and modern warfares and all this sorts of stuff, you know? It's, yeah, it's good that we honoured him. Actually, anyone for Heavy Rain, I felt, like, honoured to be like, man, that, that game was awesome, right? Yeah, it was, it was a really fantastic experience, actually. I, I've only actually played Heavy Rain the last couple of months, actually, so I was quite late to the game, but just the, the whole blend of... whole blend of... This is good. How, how many can we get a go for? Right, right. It's like whack-a-mole. Next time someone does it, punch in the face. It, it's a quick time event game, and not a lot of people like that, obviously. But the way it's actually presented, yeah. it doesn't feel like it's really patronising, and it also doesn't feel like it's a slog to play through. And, yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, it, it's a bit like one of those adventure books, you know, that the story must go on, the story controls all. Go to page three. Go to, no, don't go to page three. You don't go to page three, and a lot of people, you know, you, they did pay three. They love pastry. No, I love a bit of pastry. Love a bit of Madison and pastry. Oh. Sorry, sexism in games, not cool. Anyway, so... You right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You were just thinking of Madison, weren't you? Yeah. Oh, well. I'll let you, uh, let you have five minutes. Dumb? Yeah. Awesome. Know. Okay, cool. Right, wicked. Uh, so, yeah, so Heavy Rain then. It's a bit like an adventure book, so you kind of... It just has that element of... Excellence, really. You know what? We've talked a lot tonight, and my my vocal cords. Co co I can't even. You can't even talk. And oh, oh, and Jane, Jane just that's three times the charm. Jane Douglas there, just running across the camera. Jane Douglas, it's like you don't exist, man. Yeah, no. Can we We're get the here. rest of them to run? Yeah, yeah, just well? just get them over. We've got the uh, the rest of Gamespot literally just on the the left of us there. So hopefully they might make an appearance and uh, bob their heads up and down as well. Cheeky bastards. Cheeky, lovable bastards. Anyway. Right, um, lots of coverage coming up. See, I can't even speak anymore. Like, but lots of coverage coming up. We have got loads of quotes. Everyone's just walking in front of the camera. Oh, come no, on, no, guys! No, no, no. Get gotta in here! Come it, on! You've got to make up the numbers. Oh, oh no! Guy Cocker didn't. Oh, jeez! We've had four people do it already, and Guy Cocker did this not. This is getting bad. He would have been like the end of level boss of people walking through the camera, but he didn't want to do it. He didn't. Can, it can only mean one thing: party time. Oh, oh, we know we should go for this on the way out. Keep going, keep going. 